So Dana went through this phase when he was about 18, I'm gonna say. He would uh, he went through a small tanking phase, as people do, and um, he went through this phase where he'd become a little bit emotionally vacant on the court during his training sessions. And his coach at the time, Mark Draper, would, uh, would when he would recognize him becoming vacant, he would say, Dano, get the showers, mate. As in like, your session's done, time to have a shower, you know? And for some reason, this term, the saying just, just came back into the boys' um, bantiful repertoire uh, during India. And, um, and when somebody was done or when you were finishing a session, you'd say showers, you know? Um, so at the end of a match, it became a kind of a joke between uh, Tristan uh, Waltz, um, Dano and I that, uh, you know, we would, you'd hit the showers, you'd literally celebrate with a shower as if, um, as in like you're done. So um, that came back in. So if you were, it became a privilege. If you want a match, you got to hit the showers. There's a massive comparison mentality that goes around in today's world. I notice it so much get uh, compounded on my mindset through social media and whatnot. Um, and uh, for me personally, like, <clears throat> could be, I could take the route of continually questioning uh, why I'm playing tennis and what I want to get out of it and uh, what would be worth it, da da da. da. And I feel like um, it's just so healthy to to take le to take uh, this almost the significance out of what you're doing, and not and um, just. It's really healthy to move away from not regularly questioning it. Like naturally, those thoughts are going to come and go, but um, making it less about what you're doing, but more so about just the attitude you're doing it with. Right now, this is what I'm doing, and that's that. And so, um, I'm not going to question it every day. Uh, maybe it can be healthy to set a timeline. Okay, I'm not going to allow myself to question trajectory for the next eight months but I just can only question the attitude I'm doing it with. So if I'm gonna be sitting in India trying to play tennis, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna do it with a good attitude and I'm gonna do it as best as I know possible. And with this accumulated knowledge that um, me those methods are gonna change, but with what I've got right now, um, I'm gonna do it as good as I can. Must be nice being that good looking. Do you get sick of it? Tough, I forgot eh? my stick. <laughs> yeah, shit. Just, just woke up early on Sunday, day one of qualities, so there's not going to be many match, uh, practice courts today, so me and Tristan working up early, trying to get 9 to 10 hit, match warm-up start at 10 o'clock. So if you want a full court today, on days like this, on Sundays, if you're a manager player, it's best bets early morning or late afternoon. And I'm up early, so I'm going to go get it done now. New view, apparently there's 30 million people in Delhi, more than Australia. That's kind of wild to even think about. Which means more pollution, more dust in the air. Need a knife and fork to just inhale the air, it's good. But yeah, another day, another dollar. This stuff is the goat. Should I put it straight under my clothes or put it on my face first though? What do you reckon? Well, when you put on clothes, at least you know it's yours. Just chuck on your clothes first. I'll put it on the face first and let it get to the clothes by the end of the session. Get you get pretty good at applying from Australia. Yeah. from Australia. I can do left, left index fingertip 
application. Yeah, that is a pre-match. It's the pre-match application because then it, that's the smallest surface area you can contaminate yeah. with slippery sunscreen. That's actually a good shout. Do the one finger, and then I just wash that one finger off. Yeah, that's, very, my that's a very thorough job. See ya. I'm up. Double's practice is a funny one. It's uh, definitely not as enjoyable as singles practice. There's a lot um, less to practice in a sense. Often it's serve, it's return, and they're kind of serve partner first volley, or the first volley as if the servers serve volleying, as, as we're doing in this drill. The benefit of playing with Ray Ho um, is not only he's a great guy, a great player, but he uh, you know, he's there for, for doubles only. So we can get out and get reps in as a team. We can, uh, here we are with another team, Arjun and, and Jeevan, the Indian team that are both, I think just inside or just outside the top 100 in the world. So our days revolved around, you know, as a team trying to, trying to um, gel and trying to get reps in, playing points. And yeah, sometimes we'll just do specific one-on-one -on -one stuff, um, ball feeding. But saying, uh, say I'm playing with Dane, for instance, which, which would be sick and, and so much fun. He's gonna be out there, um, prioritizing his singles practice. So um, what I would be doing if I am playing with a guy that's that's prioritizing singles is I'll find another doubles player in the draw that's playing with a singles dominant player and I'll match up with them or team up with them to, for some practice sets. And although it's not ideal to not be playing with your partner, you still need to be getting points in, you know? So uh, that's why it's, it, it is really, I think it's beneficial for the uh, progression of, of doubles to be playing with a guy that's prioritizing doubles. I'm feeling absolutely showers right now. Got a, uh, for some reason, it's just done. I've been that motivated, but I'm really trying to lock in here, get present. Doesn't change anything. I was so unmotivated. to come forward. So, so think about doves. You're out here for an hour 45, you're like a bit too short. <laughs> And of course, there's nothing like just replicating normal and serving points. So most of the time when you're playing with another pair, you will just play sets. Sometimes you'll play two up, two back, and some people like a few different drills, but you'll do most of the specific drilling just with your partner. It's a tactic for me to get motivated at times like this. I'm not usually unmotivated, but the tactic I deploy is just to try to have something really specific in, the, in my mind to achieve process or intent to be able to dive a little bit. I just think I'm out here playing around. So you don't want it, you're not diving? Yeah, that's, that's slow though. Slow. Run. And you think they'd get better. Oh! 
And that's what happens when you miss your spot in the serve and you're supposed to go backhand body. Second coffee. 7.40 a.m. First bus is at 8. Gonna get a car down with Tristan at 7.40. Let's get there a little bit earlier. Get in the gym and limber up and play first on a 10. Not often you're playing dubs first on a 10, but uh, yeah, take it. Ready to go. Beautiful morning. Just finished warm up and uh, just did a man Wim Hof, Wim Hof heard the breathing session. It's like a quick 11 minutes. This feels really good to just centre the mind. I feel, um, I feel a tiny bit under low stress about uh, not wanting to lose. It's definitely not the mentality you want to go in. So it's a good mechanism to just come back to present feeling and uh, feel calm and composed. And so again, my goal for this match is really just stay alert, look for the ball, um, try and be aggressive, play on our terms, enjoy it, have good energy throughout, and not be running from a loss, but rather be trying to grab hold of a win. But I'm ready for it. Good luck, strike nice. them well. See you, see you with two W's. 11 14, vamos. The third week in India for me, I'm facing two first round losses in a row, obviously. And Ray's actually was there a week earlier and he had another first round, which is super rare for him. Really good doubles player. So <clears throat> we're both in a uh, little bit of this um, El Desperado mindset. Really wanted to get a win. Um, but also just not like I'd, I'd accepted the possibility of of finishing the trip with, with no wins and no points on the board, you know. Um, I realised that, uh, you know, it's a long year and my best course of action is to focus on the way I need to play to, to get better and to get wins in the future. Uh, so uh, that was, our, you know, our plan uh, to come in, um, play the right brand of tennis, have a high energy. We just wanted to kind of fire each other up and... and uh, Try and play the right way, and and hopefully you know winning is the byproduct of that pursuit, not um, not just pursuing the result. Uh, so it was a little bit of a tense start here. I felt like um, these guys are playing well. Uh, Shimizu, the left-hander, uh, he is unbelievably skilled player, uh, really good singles player, and just really good shot maker. I uh, don't think um, he's that worried about winning doubles matches. So he, he plays with a, a lot of flair. And and, uh, and then El Cantara, um, he's a he's a really good doubles player. He's got great hands. He knows where to be on the court. Um, doesn't possess much for firepower, but a smart player. Uh, um, high tennis IQ, I would say. Um, so early days here, Ray and I in trouble. Uh, 15.40 on Ray's serve and a kind of shank yeah. pass from him, 2-3, um, one of those feelings that everything's kind of gone against here, but we're determined to um, stay on track here. And as you can see from me, they're coming in with an aggressive point, um, really good reaction from El Cantara. Again, just aware of being in the right spot. And geez, that's a great smash from Shimizu. Uh, Ray and I are hanging on, staying positive, kind of just um, encouraging each other uh, here. Um, I was, you know, Taking into account what has happened in my last two matches and, and, and determined to hit the, hit the passing shots firmly, keep going through the court. Um, discipline there definitely could have got around the net and thought about that, but 
big point there. Happy I went through the middle and and uh, here we go. Four all sudden death juice and a great serve from Ray. That's all, that's what you want on the big point like that. Um, so we're back from a down down a break, uh, back to five four up. As um, soon as I've got that slice grip there, Alcantara is ready to move. That's smart from him. Uh, six five here on serve. We're apply, applying applying pressure. Where, uh, geez, that was a funny point. Ray kind of got in the way, and I was I was uh, coming in right behind him and and um, threaded that line. They're really good for me. Just aggressive, not wanting to uh, um, just trying to guide the ball, not wanting to lob, just going through them. And a good return from Ray. We kind of stole that set seven five from a breakdown, and now we were you know we we're feeling confident and we we're, we're pumping each other up and. Um, our level kind of rose as this match went on. Um, really good stuff from Alcantara. That's one thing I've got better at is just is, is holding my ground and on the defense or the, it's a bit of a kamikaze coming at me and being able to make him play that extra volley as I did before. Great point from me there. Too good from Shimizu. That's, um, yeah, you're prepared to lose that one is to do the right thing. Uh, yeah, good depth uh, on my behalf. Um, Ray shutting the net down well. And uh, again, another example of me being aggressive, trusting my strokes, going after it on a big point there. Um, I served much better this match. I was, um, geez, point on case there. I was I was really going after my first serve, hitting it much flatter, hitting my spots. Just the last two matches, uh, keeping my my head up and um, there for, uh, you know, able to hit. I was trusting my flat serve more. That middle ball, that's a great example. I was really happy. I was just being assertive to take the middle ball. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter who takes it, just about not hesitating. Uh, so here we are, two all, um, 45th. Again, a really good example of me trying to look for the ball, stalking it after that smash, not waiting for it, not not watching the ball. Um, and this is that match point. We have first match point, Ray goes long, and second match point here, uh, really good return. I was happy with the cross here. That's a right move from me. Put pressure on him, and shimizu has gone from the lob. And geez, that was pure relief from us. I'm um, finally get to do a shower celebration. So that was a great bit of comedy for us. We were first round win. Doesn't even go on our ranking, but that felt like a title just to get the monkey off the back. And um, yeah, we'll stoke with that and keen for the next one. Just learning from the best, Tristan and I. Look, taking a few notes. It's one thing to watch Rafa at the French, but I'd rather watch Rafa in Rwanda. Yeah, Rafa in Rwanda, but it's full court. Fight, mate. Vamos. 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 Desperation Vamos. in the grunt. He's on lockdown. Vamos. That's literally Rafa-esque. Vamos. Vamos. Get there, son. Oh, no, Wi-Fi. No, Vamos. Yes, Lasso. Oh my ball. god. Almost it must up. have been so tight. Oh Vamos. my god. That's too tough. Vamos. That is too tough. Vamos. Hottest, hottest umpire ever. Into the first round of uh, of New Delhi, 75k against Kaznikowski, I was in a pretty weird headspace. I was feeling a little bit mentally burnt out. It was like my fifth week or sixth week in a row. Um, I was feeling a little bit under the weather, uh, and I knew if I, as soon as I was out of this tournament, I was home. So there was kind of a few things that I was thinking to myself are actually, you know, losing could actually be a great thing for me. So. It wasn't that headspace of uh, not scared to lose um, that kind of is really liberating. It was more of a, I'm actually not sure if I want to win this match or not. I um, hope I can't get in trouble for that. <laughs> I definitely knew I was going to, you know, try my try my ass off to win. But at the same time, there was these kind of reasons and the reality was, I don't know, there's it a lot to look forward to if I was to lose. Um which kind of it feels weird to say, but it's the honest feeling. 
and it's tricky, you know, because you're out there playing a match and um, it wasn't that kind of liberating feeling where, oh, I've just got nothing to lose, I'm going to give it my absolute all. It's like, oh, actually, I don't know, I'm not really ready for this match. I'm not really ready to lock in. I'm feeling burnt out, feeling under the weather. But, yeah, it's just a bit of a weird headspace. But uh, you can probably see that. We'll start the match now. And you could uh, you could probably see that from the get-go. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty bad body language and a lot of uncharacteristic errors. And I felt like the headspace I was in translated to an inability to really read what was going on. I was too much caught in my head of, uh, you know, why am I feeling like this? Come on, mate, you've been doing well. Just you have a good chance to win this tournament. Um, I felt like it was more of an internal conflict and that really took my energy away from what was happening. And you can see maybe a bit of a uh, bit of dumb play from me this, this match. Not to say that I played bad, but there was just not as much mongrel and, and hunger and, and, and finding ways to to win and break this guy down. It was more just, all right, the ball's coming, I'm just going to hit it. Um, you can see there, just a kind of lackadaisical error, no footwork, another error there, just to give him the game. And yeah, I just, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to win this match. But then I've also, in the past, you know, I've, I've had this mentality, I've kind of bowed down to it, and I felt really guilty after. So I was, I've noticed, in a weird kind of conflict within myself. And I was able to, you know, kind of, conjure up a little bit of stability there and get it, get the break back, which which helped a lot. I think um, it could have been a really quick first set otherwise. Um, but I just remember, I remember kind of going in to his back end a lot the first time I played him in uh, Pune and I was able to dictate a lot of points from there. But this match, I don't know, I, just, I was really stubborn and had a bit of an Im- immature kind of headspace and I was just kind of seeing the ball and hitting the ball and that was a that was pretty showed my headspace that shot there. Um, the courts had a, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more uh, speed in them than Pune. I remember Pune being so slow. So uh, this this court definitely wasn't fast by any means. You can see here the ball's kind of not really doing too much, but still a little bit quicker than last week. And um, but yeah, this this is this, these errors would. It's tennis is such a game of small margins, you know. If you're not if you're not there mentally, like especially with my stature, five foot five foot seven, I'm um, doing a little sarcastic. Come on, there, five foot seven. It's just I'm not going to give myself a chance to win against you know challenger level and tour level players. Um, and you can kind of see you can see it directly that it's affecting my game. Just uncharacteristic areas and. Um, well, I got pretty lucky there. But yeah, just uncharacteristic errors. I think I hold I hold this game, actually. Um, I think this would have been one of the most frustrating matches he would have played in his life. I remember he had so many little chances. So many times he could have tucked me into bed, but he just left the, the bed sheet off me a little bit, and I just was able to, you know, stay awake. But yeah, I was really going through ebbs and flows of locking in and then, you know, bad bad shot selection and bad errors. I was really finding it hard to find that stable mentality the whole match. Um, but he has, a, he has a great backhand line, this guy. and um, he, was, he was using a little bit more. You can see they're a little bit panicky under pressure. But great lob to kind of back it up. But yeah, this is, a, this is a really big game and... Um, like that, just just so many points where, uh, you know, I was probably really questioning, questioning a lot of things, <laughs> to be honest. But I know doing it, doing enough right now to stay, stay on track, stay on, stay on serve. But uh, again, there, as you can see, the frustrating kind of frustration kind of getting to me. Um, and it's not. There's more frustration about my headspace and. Um, yeah, usually if I'm in a really good headspace, I can snap out of it quite well, and it doesn't really drag on. But this, this felt uh, like it was dragging on the whole match, and I had to kind of battle myself the whole match. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you can see another wayward error there. At the at the, at the end of the day, no matter how you're feeling, you, it's a it's a choice. Um, it's a choice whether you are you kind of feed into your emotions or not no matter how strong they are you still have that you still have that choice and uh this day this day i I kind of gave into them and 
adhere to them, adhere to them and get in the reality, and you can see the reality of them, kind of right now. I'm arguing with the ref and maybe using it to vent a little bit. Um, it's not a good characteristic of mine, but uh, I definitely find myself venting to officials and umpires. I'm not super disrespectful when I'm doing it, when I do it, but definitely um, not not the best way to go about handling my emotions. You can see there, yep, complaining about something else. <laughs> uh, well, I had some tactical awareness there to serve all these backhand. Uh, I remember getting a little little 2-1 lead here and then uh, a couple poor drop shots this point and another drop shot this tie break. Um, I mean, weren't bad kind of choices, but just the lack of execution was Game. was uh, evident there. And right, yeah, I remember feeling here, I'm like, yeah, I, I was thinking about the flight home, QF1, and um, but also there's that voice in me going far out, mate. Do you really want to go on the flight and, you know, have that feeling? I've, I've had this feeling before of, um, kind of giving in to my emotions and, and it really lingers. Um, it really lingers and it's, it's a much worse feeling losing through lack of mental application than it is losing through just, uh, kind of not being good enough on the day. It, it, it's, it kind of hurts the same, but losing due to less uh, lack of mental application, it kind of lingers a lot more. And uh, because you never know when it's going to be your week, you know, you, you really never know in tennis. It can it can really change so quick. So if, if you're having weeks where you're not kind of you're not there mentally, you know that could have been your week. And that, one week can change everything in tennis, especially on the challenger level. You can get a lot of points, a lot of confidence from from a good week. So. Um, I remember here I, I saved a lot of little break points and um, well not little break points a lot of, a lot of break points and you know gave myself you know a chance just yeah. to hang around hang around like a bad smell and yes I was struggling a bit mentally but at the same time you know I was I was still competing and uh, and just searching searching for ways to to try and turn this match around even though a part of me kind of didn't want to. There was obviously a part of me that wanted to win. That part of me was bigger. But there was, there was definitely this little little war going on in my head this match. And, um, I have a break point here. and You can see I'm kind of locking down this point. I'm noticing the, the big change of momentum that could come from the, winning this point. So I go back to, you know, that really good mentality and miss, miss a forehand there. But you can see I'm, I'm starting to lock in a little bit more. Um... <laughs> That was a pretty brave shot. Yeah, yeah keep, keep it in there, hanging around, and, you know, if, if you hang around, if you get that to that four or five all, don't know what can really happen. Um, oh. But, yeah, I got, uh, got lucky with the double fold on set point, and, and now I'm... I remember starting to play pretty good towards the end of that second set, and uh, I felt... I don't mean to disrespect Kaznikowski at all. I feel yeah. like he's a great player. But I felt like if... With the way I was playing, I was actually quite, kind of feeling the ball really well in the end of the second. I felt like if I was able to lock in, the match was kind of mine. Um, I felt like I started to win in the long exchanges. And you can see I get to a really healthy lead here and play a really good first two points here. Forehand winner, line and backhand winner. Um, I think this... Oh, no, not this point, sorry. This is match point. But yeah, uh, did a good job to get out of jail, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can I can recover physically, recover mentally, and that's gonna be absolutely necessary if I'm gonna you know to go deep in this tournament. Post, this is what happens even after you win a match. Read it out. Your parents must be proud of you, homosexual. Uh, this imp is born to lose. Yeah, and you won. Oh, good at this one. Oh, great match today. Wow. Wow. That's, that's the first. Fan mail. Uber home because you want to wait for the transport. It only goes on the hour. It's kind of, and it's 6.30 at night. It's kind of want to get home. It's tough. It's four bucks for about 30 minutes. Yeah. Pretty expensive. See, Chloe, if you're watching this, I still got your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 220. Sorry, sorry. More? 
68. And we got to walk through this thing, get scanned so we're not running explosives into the hotel. Security because there's a movie about it. Something happened. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, terrorists years ago or something. Uh, terrorists came into a hotel and just started shooting everyone. So that's why there's security at every single hotel here. Yeah. Like here. Routine. Late night stretch in a sauna. It's a gluteus maximus if I ever seen one. Quarterfinal against the Japanese duo, Matsui and Usugi. Um, Ray and I, okay, break points down, to third game here, but I could tell we were feeling confident and we were feeling like this is our match for the taking after getting that first round out of the way, um, passing the test. And uh, second serve there, a juice. So I, was, I was thankful for Matsui's forehand return error. Um, now, I played with Matsui first week of the year in New Caledonia, so we knew each other well. We know kind of what we're good at and know what, what to expect in a way. Um, although this is his usual partner, Asugi. They've played a lot of tennis together. Um, Ray was on fire this match. He was His forehand was going really well. He was all, all over the court, uh, covering it well and, and going after the ball. Um, on serve here, good skills from Matsui. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Asugi, um, great player himself, uh, good, good returner, um, un underrated server, hits his spots well, and uh, so here we are, a little bit of anger for me there, but that's fine. And geez, Matsui, he's uh, what, what a great friend he is. This point, five four to us, and Juice, and he gives us a double fault. Uh, obviously, a bit of anger from him there <clears throat> to give the set. Ninety four percent first serve points won from them that's uh we must be doing well in the second serve <laughs> um really in control here uh upper set i'm um, looking to take it to uh consolidate the break at a juice point second serve again and uh, just get lucky if the second serve return error there now we um holding on to that serve 4-1 up and 15 all um you know doing well i'm, uh, I'm using my skills to sit there and, uh, Dipping that pass nicely, making them come up with something. This is an opportunity to finish the match really here. 6 4 4 1 juice, and then get back to this game. And I go, I hit two double faults in this game, and all of a sudden I, I, I saw the finish line and I, I noticed I got a little bit tense. And um, I, I kind of thought, just keep uh, uh, doing what you're doing. And then I, well, I thought, well, what am I doing? You know, why am I serving good? And I just overthought it a little bit, <laughs> ridiculously. And uh, Ray holding up the brick wall strong here, but um, my bad there, definitely my ball to cover the middle. A little bit stagnant and they're back on serve. And uh, I was I bounced back really quickly here. Good pass from me there. Um, creating breakpoint opportunities again. And they're bringing it back to Juice. And uh, I can't remember this point, what happens? Oh yeah, Matsui again. That's just bad communication on their behalf. You've got to, Asugi's probably gonna go for that, but. Hey, it happens. And then there we are, 5-3, going for it. Smart volley from me, taking the pace off on that one. Uh, again, at least I'm, I'm looking to cover the middle there. And and uh, here we are, standing at match point. Um, yeah, Ray playing some really good tennis, serving so well. And he was he was excited with that one. He's happy to win. A little shower celebration there. Cheers, boys. Uh, semi-finals, we're back, baby. Love it. Um, pleasure to play these guys. A big respect for both of them. And uh, we're pumped for the next round. First time I've ever had somebody stretch me out. First time ever. This is the best thing ever. I can just lay here and get stretched. Against Tristan, um, kind of had similar feelings to the first round going into the match. I uh, being a little bit under the weather, not too bad. Um, but just noticed the, the lack of mongrel. I was kind of hoping that you know, being the second round now, a little bit deep in the tournament, that would kind of dissipate. But I think um, kind of made me realise that, yeah, a lot of the matches or just the, the hectic schedule of late was kind of starting to get to me and taking a, taking a wear on the mind. Just, um, just yeah, definitely finding it harder to focus and really lock in. Um, you know, tennis is fine margins, so 
It makes makes uh, it a lot harder. That's for sure. Um, I think I actually get up uh, get up an early break here and um, play to just a solid point here and just kind of just waiting for him, waiting for him to make an error or kind of go for something. Um, it's something I I can I uh, tend to go to on on bigger points, especially. If the courts are pretty slow like this. Just just letting my opponent know that I'm I'm not going to miss and using my my speed to kind of put pressure on them, make them go for the extra ball like that one there. Swimming. So even though yeah, contrary to how I was feeling, I was uh um you know getting able to get up an early break and uh, yeah I'd, I don't know it's just it was a quite challenging you know bad, battling the feelings of um. You know, not, not my whole being wasn't really thrilled to be out there. Um, mind trying to come up with excuses and and things. Um, but yeah, again, it just takes away from my ability to you know find ways to win and problem solve, and that's that's what's needed for someone my height and, and stature and game style. But yeah, miss miss that forward, give them the break, and miss it when the thoughts. You know, it starts to get a bit harder. When, when you're winning on the scoreboard, everything's a little bit easier. But uh, when things don't go your way, that's, that's, uh, that's when it becomes a lot harder. But Tristan played a played a great match. He's a, he's a class player. He's, he's uh, got some big ground strokes and um, likes to play very aggressive and backed up by a good serve and it's very, very good mentally, I feel like. He's a great competitor. Um, hard on himself. You can see that on the court. You can see, yeah, just a few errors here. please. And see, uh, when I've you know seen Tristan train, um, yeah, he's always getting the most out of himself and very, very intense, very focused, and uh, that's you know that's why he's a, he's a player he is, and I feel like that could take him a long way. Um, yeah, catching that forehand a bit late. Nice little feely point there. Purcell would like that one. Um, but yeah, I remember. I wasn't playing too well, and uh, it, it always is hard to play really well when you're when you're battling mentally a little bit. Um, yeah, I didn't didn't tank by no means, but uh, definitely even even Callum and Tiago, the, the massage therapists, were watching. They can. It's definitely a tangible difference when um, when someone's not mentally fully locked in, even if it's you know ten percent. It's it's definitely noticeable. And it would definitely show up on the scoreboard a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, I had the little chances here to you know, go up 6-5. And he uh, was missing volleys at the start of the match, but you know, came up pretty clutch with a, with a few volleys when it counted. And you can see here, he just likes to take over the, the point when he came and gets that first strike. It's quite good. And yeah, just a few errors, just bleeding errors um, when having my chances. And you can see a nice volley there again. Um, Oh, I remember this point. Wow, great, great point there. <laughs> and even just this little body, body language things like that, you can tell I'm, I'm peed off. My my sh my fuse is short. <laughs> um, and and then another error. And that's kind of the, that was the story of the match. Just just bleeding errors, and uh, playing just a little bit unclear. Um, but to Tristan's credit. He made it. He made it tough for me. You know, he really knuckled down. Maybe noticed yeah, I was set. You know, making errors and really knuckled down and, and and made it very tough for me. But had chances there, but ended up losing the first set, seven five. Um, yeah, had had an early chance here with the break point. I actually don't remember what happened. Yeah, just great point again from Tristan. Um, just. Again, his ability to take over the point, and that builds a lot of pressure. Uh, cause you know, you're a bit more scared to drop the ball short. You know, he's going to pounce on it and take over, take over the point. And uh, I know my my wheels are really good, but at the same time, if I'm on the if I'm on the defense, I'm not going to be you know winning many points at this level. So, particularly serve and first ball. Oh, <laughs> sorry, mate. I should have used that to fire me up. But yeah, you can see, you know, down a, down a set and a break. And just found it hard to really reel the, the error count in. And Tristan, you know, making it tough for me by 
come into the net a lot and uh, you know, taking, taking the points out of my hands and not letting me settle in and get comfortable. Notice this match, oh that was a great shot. Notice this match um, falling off my forehand a little bit, watching it back now. And just another error, just errors, errors, errors. You can see the errors are not, they're a bit, I don't know, they're not um, kind of just random. It's not really constructing the point and then kind of lacking execution. It's more just like rally balls where I'm missing and, you know, so that yeah, return kind of sums up my level. But yeah, take five, no, six, nothing away from Tristan. He played a very, very, uh, very stable and steady level the whole match. Played good and, um, yeah, he's a great, great bloke. Absolute legend and uh, wish him all the best. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my India stint done. Um, a little bit uh, disappointed to end end it with my performances in New Delhi. I know I won a round still, but um, just like just giving in to the the way I was feeling a little bit, that kind of sat with me for a bit longer, and that is a feeling I try to avoid, and I've been avoiding it as of late. But uh, definitely crept in there. But it's a little wake up call, you know, just a reminder of how it feels to not give. It. 110%. Last night with all the boys in India. Closing to the chapter. Boys have picked up a fair few points. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> One digger departing. Tiago there to kiss him goodbye. <laughs> Flying back home today. Cannot wait. Come on. Dano's said goodbye to me. Holy shit. Now he's back. I'm just chilling here watching a bit of Hubie. I'm sure I'd, I'd love India that much. Thought so I'd come back and miss the boys, you know. That moss just got me over the line. Four hour stopover in Vietnam. Booked his Viet jet. Checked it. Oh, I, was, yeah. I was witness. Checked that. If you needed a visa to go through Vietnam, and what he read out to me stated that you only needed it if you're there for 24 hours or more. Booked it through Kiwi.com. Because there was a self-transfer, I had to get my bags in Ho Chi Minh, so I had to leave the airport, technically. To get my bags, I needed a visa, so they didn't let me forward the first flight. Even though I had a second flight booked, and they could obviously see that. I showed them the itinerary. So now I'm just trying to do my visa for Vietnam and fly it tomorrow. Dagger. Dagger. Page isn't loading. Dagger after dagger. I'm secretly happy because now if I lose, I get a partner to fly home tomorrow night with. So win-win for me. I'm off. That's selfish. Yeah. Dagger. Okay. This is actually the tour. You left to the airport how long ago? Left to the airport at 8.30 p.m. Left to the airport three hours ago. Now back to square one, except... Two grand down. <laughs> Still trying to dig a flight. No one fly through Vietnam. Note to self. Need a visa. Even if you just transfer the fairing, don't fly via Vietnam. Or do it and go two K down. Yeah. And then you remember. Yeah, you remember after that. Yeah, it got me once, but I forgot literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Exhibit. Curtains. My second attempt to get him back home. Yes, sir. Back at the terminal after last night's debacle, giving it another another shot. Got a 12 hour direct flight to Sydney, stopping over there for five and a half hours. Was going to catch up with Dave, but he's, he's coaching, so I've just been chilling by myself, twiddling my thumbs for five hours, and a fly from there to Sunny Coast. Five weeks at home. But more. Cannot wait, honestly. Morning swims. Aussie brekkie, Aussie coffee, doesn't get any better. Talk about kicking a man when he's down. I was just on my second attempt of a flight to get back home. Sat on the plane on the tarmac for about three hours. And then we had to get off and <laughs> change planes because there was something wrong. So this is now attempt three. I just did my security check again, transferring to the next gate. This is attempt three. 
of trying to get back to the greatest land on earth. Third time lucky, they say. Let's see if it lives up to it. Born kick change for the third set. Just thought I'd change it up. It's 41 degrees in here, literally. Semi-final, playing the German duo again. Schneider and Walner. Uh, this time we were up for the test. We knew what to expect and we were we were feeling confident with two wins under our belts now and um, my serving rhythm was getting better and we're just active, uh, just active looking for the balls all the time. I was closing in there, not really still on my feet, always always after it. I, I hit this backhand uh, return line tremendously well this day. It is a strength of mine and it's it's a reason why I should be, you know, have aggressive mentality in my returns. Is when I have that mentality, I, I seem to return much better. Um, Ray was was on fire this match as well. He was, he was, for him was was on song as usual and, and serving really well. Um, so on serve early days here, uh, good good tennis all around, good level. Um, three all forty thirty, which is a, that's a great net position from Ray and really good cover from my smash there. That's a good sign of confidence. Again, a nice backhand return line. Uh, it's creating break points here. And um, yeah, just threading the needle. It's a big point. I was pretty stoked with that one. So 5-3, Ray serving. I'm feeling confident. Oh, geez, I, I crossed too early there. That's for sure. It's, that's why it's so good to see the video. Um, but Ray was able to thread the needle line. Um, so 45th, two set points here. And uh, I don't think they were happy with that call. Um, but from, from memory, uh, Ray said it was just long. And and uh, regardless, you take the calls, you know. It's, we go with the umpire's call every time, even if you're playing your friends. So Juice, first point, first game, we got a break point. And I've got a little bit lucky, but I've had the right intention on that return to take the take the break. And um, I'm just yeah, really proactive here. This is the type of doubles I want to be playing. I want to be looking for the ball. I want to be um, stalking it. Okay, maybe this is a little over the top uh, in a way, but, geez, I... I'd way rather be like that. I'd way rather be all over the court than, uh, and um, maybe take one or two of my opponent's shots than be too still. Um, a little bit like the first match, I uh, said last match, sorry, against Asugi Matsui. Just, um, I put in a bad service game at a set and a break up to bring him back into it. Uh, again, though, the positive was I was able to bounce back. Um, they, uh, they, they were fighting. They're a really um, energetic team, letting us know that they were always present and always... Uh, Still, still there looking for the win. Um, it's good feet from me. Good eyes looking for the, for the contact, uh, looking for the ball. Um, a little bit of miscommunication there, but good point from them, and a, and a come on to follow as usual. Uh, six all, second set here. Um, quality from Schneider, but uh, uh, sorry, yeah Schneider, but I like Ray looking for that ball. Uh, here's my backhand return, paying off for us again, going after it. Match point. Great shot from Ray. God, I would have paid big bucks for that ball to go long. Um, by big bucks, I mean like 40 bucks. I don't have much money. But um, they took a second set there uh, in a breaker a little bit, trying to put that match point out of our minds now and, and play the aggressive mentality, you know. Um, they were playing some good tennis, uh, but I was, I was determined to remain um, proactive here. This point from memory was hilarious. I wasn't sure where Ray was, uh, really, but all I was thinking was, you know, just keep stalking the ball, keep going for it, keep looking for it. That's really um, <laughs> fun point to win there. That's that's how we want to be playing. A match point to them, I break a string on match point and hit it long. Always a tough one to swallow when you have a match point. That's a match, you know, for to get in the final of a challenger, doubling your points there, almost. Um, 30 to 50, I think, so... Uh, Happy, happy with the with the tennis I'm playing. Just like that, the India leg is done and the trek home begins. Tick the legs to Doha and then for eight hours in Doha. Um, save me from coin and then Doha to Brisbane. Super eager to get back and train, can't wait, but uh, gonna take a couple of days off. Um, Recharge the batteries, as they say, also known as surf five hours a day, and uh, kick back with the fam. Cannot wait. It's been a good, been a good stint. I was worried at one stage I was going to come back with uh, no wins on the board, so happy I finished with a couple at least. But um, definitely would have loved to get better results-wise, but uh, controlled all the things I could. 
uh, effort and attitude was up there and the camaraderie of the boys was was epic. It was, um, it was just made so much better to have that crew there with us, have Waltz and Tristan and Dano and Bernie and Rom and uh, have T.I. go along with us. Loved it. What's the thing you crave most, sort of, when you're out, when you're on the road? Oh, sorry, in the airports traveling, the sunlight. I'm now two hours in. Doha airport looking for a patch of carpet. Absurdly hard. Asking everyone, this airport's absolutely massive. But just on a patch of carpet to trigger the hips while I lay on my laptop or phone. Not asking for much. Yeah, boy. That is just five hours spent in the lounge. Two meals, a couple of bottles of water, coffee, nice chair, just kicking back and uh, just cruised out of there. No worries. Not a member. Got denied and just slipped through the cracks. Savvy. It must be nice. It must be nice. <laughs>